It is wonderful to be here. That this year we're here in the sanctuary at Congregation Bethel, but just as easily we could have been right across the street with our friends at Bethesda United Methodist Church. That for decades we have been gathering right before Thanksgiving to give thanks, to extend friendship, and to gather together. And this year, even when we cannot gather together together in the traditional sense that we are here, some of us are, a few of us are here in the sanctuary, and others of us are gathered in living rooms, dining rooms, maybe some even out in your backyards. And we also think of those that are watching tonight from hospital rooms, when they're on break from work, wherever they might be, that you are welcome here, you are welcome tonight, and it is good to give thanks together. That the friendships that we have spanning the, the intersection of Old Georgetown Road and Huntington Parkway are more than just institutional friendships that we love to gather together to see each other. And so it is with great sincerity that I welcome Reverend Jenny Cannon and, and our friend as well, Reverend Scott Bostick, that Scott and I spent part of Yom Kippur together this year having really an important conversation. Uh, and possibly around mid-January after this holiday that's taking place at Bethesda United that happens in late December, you know the holiday I'm talking about, right? So after Christmas and after New Year's, we're looking forward to continuing our conversations together related to social justice issues that are so important and unite us as houses of worship here in Lower Montgomery County. So welcome tonight, and I want to, to invite uh, Reverend Scott to speak now. Thank you. Beloved, will you join me in our opening prayer? We come together this night to say thank you, O oh God. We say thank you for the day, for the morning and the night, for the sunset and the sunrise, and for everything in between. We thank you, O oh God. For the many blessings that we enjoy in this world and for the spaces where you call us to bless others, we thank you, O oh God. For this moment and space in the midst of all that is going on in our world, in our nation, in our community, we thank you, O oh God for this time to worship you and to give thanks for the blessings that we know and for the ones that are unknown to us. O oh God, may this time remind us that all that we have and all that we are comes from you. We thank you and we praise you, O oh God, now and always. In your many names, we pray. Amen. Amen. We will now hear a piece uh, that will be introduced to you by our Hassan. <clears throat> Thank you, Scott. And, um, it's really a pleasure to be here again with everybody, and I know there's so many people watching and uh, joining us from all of your homes um, around the area, and this is going to be our first um, musical selection of the evening after the beautiful intro, um, Simple Gifts, that was played uh, so beautifully by Chris Warrington. This is our Gesha Chorale, our middle school chorale. Uh, the musical director is Evelyn Golden, and we have three soloists. Corey Braychuk, Eva Schwartz, and Daniela Kalp enjoy this uh, rendition of True Colors by the Gesher Chorale. <laughs>
Let me share with you the prayers for healers, a prayer written by Rabbi Ayelet Cohen. May the one who bless our ancestors bless all those who put themselves at risk to care for the sick, physicians and nurses, orderly technicians and home health aides, EMTs and pharmacists, hospital social workers and respiratory therapists who navigate the unfolding dangers of the world each day, to tend to those they have sworn to help. Bless them in their coming home and bless them in their going out. Ease their fear, sustain them. Source of all breath, healer of all beings, protect them and restore their hope. Strengthen them that may that they may bring strength, give them in health, that they may bring healing. Help them know again a time when they can breathe without fear. Bless the, scared, the sacred work of their hands. May these plagues pass from among of us speedily and in our days. Amen. It is my honor now to introduce an anthem, both houses of, wor houses of worship gathered together to sing together for the beauty of the earth that we are going to listen and watch together now. Thank you. 
Let me share with you a reading from the book of Psalms, Psalm number eight, first in Hebrew. La menaceach al gigit mismor le David. Adonai Adonai no madre shimcha bechol aretz asher tnaa odecha al hashamayim. Impio le lim beyom kim yasad taoz leman sorerecha. Leashvit oyev ubin nakem. Ki edeshamecha maasei etzba otecha. Yareach bekochavim asher konanta. Maenosh ki tizgerenu ben adam ki tifkedenu. Batechasreu mead me elohim. Bechavod behadar te atreu. Tamshileu bemasea deja. Colchata taja trablav. Tone be alafim. Kulam begam bahamot sadai. Tipor shamaim udgeayam. Over or hot yamim. Anayadonainu madrishimha. Bechola arets. Now I will read the translation into something very close to the English because of my pronunciation. That's what I meant to say. For the conductor on the gigist, a sound by David. God, our master, how mighty is your name throughout the earth. You who places your majesty on the heavens. Out of the mouth of babes and suckling, you have established strength because of your enemies to silence foe and avenger. When I behold your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars that you have set in place, I think. What is, flail, what is frail man that you should remember him? And the son of mortal man that you should be mindful of him. Yet you have made him but slightly less than the angels and crowned, crowned him with soul and splendor. You give him dominion over your handiwork. You place everything under his feet, his feet, sheep and cattle, all of them, even the beasts of the field, the birds of the sky and the fish of the sea. For man ever traverses the lines of the sea. God, our master, how mighty is your name throughout the earth. I promise that one day I will read with a good accent one day. And that is the name, one day, of the song that Marakayom, the teen a cappella group of Bethel, will be singing for us. One day. Sometimes I lay under But I never let it get me down And when negativity surrounds I hope someday it will all turn around Because all my life I've been waiting for I've been praying for For the people to say That we don't want to fight no more There'll be no more wars And our children will pray One day, one day, one day One day feet on the soles of the innocent blood trench pavement keep on moving though the water stays reaching in this maze you can lose your way your way might drive you crazy but don't let it fade you no way no way sometimes in my tears i drown but i never let it get me down and when negativity surrounds i hope someday it will all turn around because all my life i've been waiting for i've been praying for for the people to say that we don't want to fight no more there'll be no more wars and our children will pray People the same, stop all the violence, down with it. One day we'll all be free and proud to be 
under the same sun, singing songs of freedom like we We will now hear a recording from the Bethesda United Methodist Church Handbell Choir, the Bethesda Bells. amaze me and I remember so fondly Chris when you ran out with the huge bell for me um, that uh, 
just the, the ease of friendship and joking that we have with each other is so important and it lightens my, my heart. That as we turn to really one of the most important parts of today, which is to support not only the friendship that we have with each other, but to support the community that we live in, that we're making suggestions that we continue to help the really important work of Bethesda Cares and also of Bethesda Help, that these two organizations do so much direct service assistance with food, financial assistance, and so many other things for the needy right here in our community. It is too easy to overlook those in need living here in Bethesda and the immediate area around us. Let's be thankful. Let's have gratitude. And please, let's also be generous. So for the next minute or, or so, Chris is going to play, and I invite you on a different device or to make a commitment to yourself now that you'll go online and support the work of Bethesda Cares or Bethesda Health. Well, they say that it's important to keep long-standing traditions fresh and relevant. So here we are, this many decades into a very beloved tradition, at the very first virtual version of the Congregation Bethel Bethesda United Methodist Interfaith Thanksgiving Service. And while the format is clearly a little bit different than we are used to, I think it's important to point out some of the things that have stayed the same. As Rabbi Harris has shared, the music, as always, is a joy and a delight. I suspect that Rabbi Harris's role as the number one handbell fanboy will also never fade. The jokes about how many years the service has actually been taking place and the fact that we will probably never get it precisely right, that'll never stop. The collegiality and the genuine friendship between our clergy and our congregations, our love and care for the Bethesda community that continues to be shared in palpable ways throughout the year. And I certainly hope that those things never change. But it's also clear that we gather tonight wherever we are gathering under very different circumstances than we ever have before. 
And I want to say that I am grateful, actually, for the chance to still give thanks to God here in this community, but doing that at least in part by helping to keep each other as safe and healthy as possible. That's part of our call as people of faith, of course, caring for each other. And hopefully that's not a hard sell for most of us. But Psalm 8, it reminds us that caring for the health and the life of all creation, that's actually part of our identity as human beings. So living with humility and respect, that isn't just something that we do with each other because public officials beg us to. Caring for the earth isn't something we strive for just because we worry that our great-great-grandchildren will one day be living on oceanfront property in Ohio. We care for each other. We care for this world because that's who God created us to be. That's how God created us to be. And we praise God most faithfully not by proving how self-sufficient we are, not by picking ourselves up by our bootstraps or proving why we don't need anyone to do us any favors. We certainly don't praise God by seeing how far we can stretch and stress the planet. We praise God by recognizing that we need each other, that we need this beautiful world that we live on and its resources. And it is not weakness or fear, but faith and strength and love that is at work when we cultivate that and care for each other. And so as God's handiwork breathed into life from God's holy dirt, we have a specific role to play, it turns out, in tending to it. Now, I have actually learned a lot about dirt in these last few months, because one of our family projects during the pandemic and all this at home time has been to take up composting. So several months ago, we received in the mail a package of 10,000 red wiggler worms from a company called Uncle Jim's Worm Farm. And together with the banana peels and the million pounds of coffee that my household generates a week, and water and sunshine and time, there has actually been some really good dirt being created in the sub pod in my backyard. Now, I will not go so far as to say that it is holy dirt, but it is pretty darn close. But it turns out that good dirt is messy. It's the kind that leaves smears on your fingers and clings to the bottom of your shoes. And good dirt actually takes a lot more work than I thought it did to keep up. And so this work of cultivating life, of caring for creation, it's going to cause us to break a sweat. Every choice, every word, every prayer, every dollar, every march, every vote, every step, we choose to praise God by doing the hard and the holy work of caring for each other and of caring for God's world. Choosing our vocation of justice and mercy and compassion over self-preservation and self-righteousness and ridicule every day, choosing that again and again, not just when we are feeling especially generous. Now, I don't know about you, but I feel like I have seen enough of those less generous parts of humanity to last a lifetime, especially in recent months. But I've also seen extraordinary acts of courage and of creativity and of perseverance as well. We humans are a mix of both at any given moment, aren't we? Holding the capacity to harm and the ability to heal. Dirt that is dirty and dirt that is teeming with life and possibility. And one of the things I really love about this particular psalm is how in echoing the creation story from Genesis, it really tries to thread that needle on how human beings should understand ourselves. Very clearly, the psalmist wants us to know 
we are not God. We are not the sovereign one whose glory is reflected in the stars and the sky and the fish and the birds. But neither are we simply part of that creation in exactly the same way either. And so as human beings, we have a particular responsibility to be caretakers, to not diminish the majesty of God in creation, but to point to it and reflect it and honor it. When I look at your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars that you have established, what are human beings that you are mindful of them, mortals that you care for them? I've been following the Humans of New York photo project for several years now in various forms on social media. For those of you who might not be familiar with it, Humans of New York was a project started by a University of Georgia graduate named Brandon Stanton back in 2010. He began as an attempt to photograph 10,000 people on the streets of New York City. And organically going out to the street day after day, approaching people, asking to take their picture, striking up conversation, hearing stories about their life and background, he also began to include quotes in the captions of some of the photographs. Some of them humorous, some of them poignant, some of them heartbreaking. People began reading and following and seeing the stories of these humans of New York, usually with no names of any kind attached. And it was stunning to see these deeply intimate, personal glimpses into the lives of ordinary human beings and realize how many common threads were between them. That's why I like to read it. It's like a little injection of straight up humanity into the middle of my newsfeed, which otherwise seems to be crowded with a lot of articles and opinions and advice about being human. Just seeing it and reading it in such a simple format is profoundly moving. And over the years, Humans of New York has grown to an audience of over 30 million people around the globe. They have raised millions of dollars for individual people in need and for nonprofits. Their most recent project is a book of hundreds of photographs and stories from around the world, a book that is called simply Humans and it's just beautiful. I haven't really read it in order. I've just been opening it at random to see whose stories I might discover. And this week, it was a man, a photo of a man and two children from a Rohingya refugee camp in Bangladesh who described escaping into the forest as his village was burned and finding there two children leaning against a tree, crying. He described how the boy wouldn't speak and the little girl would only say that her mother had been killed. And when the man asked if they wanted to come with him, they nodded, yes. I'm taking care of them the best I can, but it's difficult because I already have a large family. I think they are happier now. The girl has made some friends in camp but she still keeps asking about her mother. What are human beings that you are mindful of them? Mortals that you care for them? We know. We know. We are the work of your hands, holy God. We are made to treat every single person on this earth as they are too. We are flawed and we are full of potential. We are created by you to love and to give and to serve beyond what is comfortable or convenient. We are called to cultivate life, to nurture the world by what we say and what we do and perhaps in this week, by what we don't do. To live not just for ourselves, 
but for and with each other. To be humbled by the precious and sacred gift of breath and life and clean water and fresh air. That is perhaps the best possible way that we can give thanks to God for the many blessings that are here among us. That is how we join the chorus of honor and glory that we see in the stars and the birds and the beasts and the rivers, not by trying to shake off our humanity or overcome our mortality, nor by trying to prove ourselves worthy or beyond reproach, but simply by being every bit of the human beings that we were created to be. Human beings who give thanks to God by honoring the life in each other and in the world. Human beings who can come through times of adversity and deep loss and still manage to create and change and even grow in our capacity to love. Thanks be to God. Holy dirt indeed. Amen. We'll now hear America the Beautiful. skies for amber waves of grain for purple mountain majesties above the fruited plain America America Shed his grace on thee, and crown thy good with brotherhood from sea to shining sea. Oh. 
city's gleam and in my human tears America America God's men thine every flaw confirm thy soul in self-control by liberty in Now the Bethesda United Methodist Church Choir, all things bright and beautiful. to see pictures of our communities together when we could be together. So I feel like I should add a note that all the recordings were done pre-COVID and so kids were together without masks and smiling faces were things that we could see and, and uh, I can feel the smiles and the warmth of all of you here in the sanctuary that it has been such a blessing to be together. And I want to thank again, Jenny and Scott. I want to thank Fabian and Asa that this friendship and collegiality and support that we share is so important to Chris. The music that you add to worship here and across the street is just beautiful and a gift. I want to thank all also the staff that have helped us behind the scenes to Pam and Sam 
to take care of all of the technology that we've been uh, utilizing tonight. When you were singing America the Beautiful, it was so beautiful, Asa. And I'm left with this idea that we can be even more beautiful. That the more that we embrace each other, the more colors we bring around the table and around conversations, that America is beautiful and it will be even more beautiful. That is a mission and a charge that we each have to accept. But for this closing blessing as we turn to Thanksgiving, that if you have food in the refrigerator, clothes on your back, a roof over your head, a place to sleep, that you are richer than 75% of people in the world. If you woke up this morning with more health than illness, you are more blessed than the million people or so who will not survive this week due to all of these different illnesses. If you have money in the bank, cash in your wallet, spare change in a dish somewhere, you are amongst the top 8% of the world's wealthiest people, no matter how you might feel today. And if you can attend services at a synagogue or a church or a mosque without fear of harassment or arrest or torture or death, you are more blessed than 3 billion people in the world. And if you have never experienced the dangers of battle, of loneliness, of imprisonment, the agony of torture, or the pangs of starvation, you are more fortunate than 500 million people in the world. And as we celebrate Thanksgiving, as we give thanks to God and to be part of this community, let us remember how truly blessed we are. God bless you. And let's extend ourselves to each other, even under this time of pandemic. Thank you for being here tonight. God bless you.